This conference call may contain certain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant line will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mukesh Shah, Chairman of Fine Organic Industry Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on our annual earnings call to discuss the business and financial performance of Q4 and FI24 earnings conference call. I hope everyone had a chance to view our financial results and investor presentation, which are posted on the company's website and stock exchanges. Today, I am accompanied by our CFO, Sonali Badani, and HGA, our investor relations advisor, who are also with me on this call. This being the first earnings call, I would like to provide some basic information about our business besides talking about the numbers for the benefit of the wider audience. The global economy in 2023-24 uh, experienced uh, various uh, dynamics that influenced its performance political tensions, trade issues, regional wars, and shifting alliances, all these things contributed to economic uncertainty. In light of these circumstances, the Indian economy has seen enormous development in recent years. We at Fine Organic Industries Limited are a well-established well and internationally recognized producer of oleochemical derived green additives based in India. We started our green additives journey back in 1970. We are pioneers in developing unique specialty additives for various end-use applications. We produce a wide range of specialty additives and cater to uh, foods, polymers, packaging, cosmetics, coatings, feed nutrition, and several other end-use applications in various industries. Our state-of-the-art production facilities are located in Ambarnath, Badlapur, Patal Ganga, and Dubbuli. R&D capability is the backbone of our business. With a team of scientists, technologists, and engineers in a dedicated R&D center, company serves as a platform to develop suitable and sustainable solutions based on consumers' and customers' techno-commercial requirements. That by in-house manufacturing and design engineering facilities, well-equipped R&D and techno-commercial approach, the company provides specialized products and technical services to the end-user industry. Our business has a considerable number of global customers and hence, approximately 52% of our revenue comes from exports into FY24. Our customers are located all over the world, including Europe, North and South America, Middle East, Asia, Africa, including Japan and China. Currently, the prices of vegetable oils are quite stable because of stable demand. 143.5 CR in Q4 FY24 from rupees 118.2 CR in Q3 FY24 and down by 29.1% from 202.4 CR in Q4 FY23. The EBITDA margin for Q4 FY24 stood at 26.2%. Fat for Q4 FY24 was 114.6 CR as compared to rupees 94.2 CR in Q3 FY24, which grew up by 21.6% on quarter and quarter and down by 23.3% to rupees 149.4 CR in Q4 FY23. For the financial year ended FY24, revenue from operation is down by 29.8 percent to rupees 2123 CR from rupees 3023 CR in FY23. EBITDA for the D grew by 35.7 percent year on year to rupees 534 CR in FY24 from 831 CR in FY23. The EBITDA margins for FY24 stood at 25.2 percent. Pat for the year financial year 24 was rupees 411.9 CR as compared to rupees 618 CR in FY23. 
which grew, we grew by 33.4 percent on year-on-year -year basis. The ROC for FY24 stood at 24.74 percent. With this, we open the floor for the question and answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mitesh Dood from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. So my uh, first question is, uh, uh, you know, on how sustainable do we see this, uh, you know, this recovery that we've seen in Q4? And uh, how much uh, volume growth can we see from here on? That is, uh, you know, from Q4 volume. So I understand, you know, it will have been a strong uh, quarter in terms of both export and domestic volumes. So how much, uh, for, you know, ramp up on capacity is still possible from here on? So, first of all, uh, sustainable about the current situation is as long as, uh, you see, it, uh, right now the raw material situation is quite favorable. In, even last quarter was quite favorable and that led us to this uh, situation. Uh, I don't, as of now, I don't see much difference than the last quarter. The raw material prices are quite stable. And demands are also almost more or less same, similar uh, like last quarter. As of at least in April, May, I'm seeing that. So uh, unless there are major changes, I don't think there will be major uh, difference uh, in this current period also. And uh, regarding uh, uh, the volume and all that, you, know, you are aware that we don't normally talk about the volume growth and all that. But just to tell you in general, uh, you are aware that all our plants are running at optimal capacity, except Patal Ganga, as I just informed you. But uh, so uh, there is not a very huge capacity available as of now to do the, the, the more volume growth is uh, expected. But uh, some capacity, of course, will be uh, utilized in coming months when Patal Ganga is still, we have some place, place to uh, increase the volumes. And again, the global uh, slowdown, which is uh, also continuing. I mean, uh, some regions have started uh, picking up, but Europe is worst affected, and uh, I don't think it will come back so uh, quickly. However, the situation in other areas like North America, South America, Asia, other places is getting better, but Europe is still not good. So uh, we have to be patient and uh, wait for one more quarter and see how it goes. Thank you. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, so one, uh, so on on Thailand, I mean, if you could just update, uh, you know, how has the progress been on uh, on the Thailand project? So we, last quarter we had mentioned that uh, you know we are waiting for permissions. Uh, uh, you know, there was some FDA uh, you know approval that we are waiting for. So if you could just provide an update on that. Yeah, Mitch. So you are right. So we were waiting for two approvals from uh, Thailand authorities. Out of that, one we already got. And one we are about to get uh, in this week itself. And uh, I'm sure, you know, our people, as I talked to them last week before, uh, yesterday, uh, they told me that they are planning to start the commissioning by latest by June end. So we are all prepared now because we got one of the permissions that allows us to send us the raw materials to them. So we have started doing all that. And uh, we expect to do the commissioning by end of June 24. Uh, sure, sir. And just one final uh, question from my side. So, any uh, any update on the SEZ land? Uh, you know, the other final permissions were awaited. I mean, the physical uh, allotment of the land. So, yeah. any progress on that side? Because I think we were expecting it by March end itself. Uh, you know, to close on that. So, where would the be as of now? <laughs> yeah, you are right. Uh, we were also after that, and I'm happy to tell you that there has been some progress. Uh, as we understand by our last meeting with them, and uh, they have to just confirm this officially by issuing a letter. 
So we are just waiting for the letter. Orally, they have done everything that they have told us that it is approved and all that. But you see, this is a government matter. We must get the allotment letter and their notice to make the payment, to make the final payment for the plot. So we are just waiting for that. And it should come any day, you know. We are just waiting for that. We are prepared from uh, our side. We are just waiting for this letter, which should come any time. Right. So, so it means uh, from there on it will take about say four to five months for EC and uh, and uh, another say eighteen months for uh, uh, you know I mean sixteen to eighteen months for construction. Once we get the allotment letter, then only we can apply for EC. Once we apply for EC and once we get the EC, which should uh, be also as early as possible, maximum six months, and then we will be able to start uh, building up of the plant. Sure, sir. Uh, thank you for answering my question, sir. Uh, wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nitesh. Thank, thank you. Next question is from the line of Ankur Periwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Mukesh. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, first question on uh, our uh, you know business mix or revenue mix in terms of food, polymers, etc. Uh, has there been a, a significant change over the few quarters, let's say FY24 versus FY23 in terms of growth? Sorry? Uh, sir, in terms of revenue mix, uh, I'm talking FY24 versus 23. Is there a shift, a significant shift among the segments? Uh, I don't think so. There may be a small changes, which is normally a part, but we have not done any specific changes from our side. So it's because, as I told you, no, the, uh, because of the slowdown globally, uh, domestic market was doing uh, much better. So there might be some product mix I might have changed, but we have not changed because the demand in domestic market is for different products. The demand for export products are also for different products. So this could have made some changes. It's not exactly the same, but we have specifically not made of any changes. We don't do such changes by ourselves. It is depending on the market situation. If my export goes up, then that means some products which we are targeting for export will grow up. And when the domestic grows up, because there are some products where the domestic demand is good, that those products will grow. Sure. Uh, the reason I was asking that was, uh, you know, uh, on, on a consistent basis, we have been seeing an improvement in margins. Even for a full year perspective, uh, you know, we are way above what our historical run rate guidance has been. So any, any change in thought there uh, in terms of EBITDA margins or gross margins? That is, uh, EBITDA margin has increased because the raw material prices uh, didn't go up. <laughs> Normally, the raw material prices go up, but the prices didn't go up, and the raw material prices are much better than we expected. Sure. Uh, and and uh, uh, how will be the proportion of long-term arrangements now, long-term contracts now in our revenue mix? Long-term contracts, the situation remains the same. Uh, uh, globally, as I told you earlier, with our customers, they are ranging from three months to six months to one year. And for raw materials also, for some products, some raw materials it is three months, six months, and for some raw materials it is one year. So again, it's a mix. For some products, earlier it was the situation was like that, nobody wanted to make any contract. But now that situation has gone since last couple of quarters. So uh, that's not an issue now. Okay, fair enough. Uh, if you could comment on the the competitive, uh, you know, intensity of the scenario globally. How how are global peers doing, especially you know, on the in, in US or in Europe, uh, you know, from market dynamics perspective. I don't know about competition. What they are doing? Maybe you can see the results there. I have not seen that. No, so uh, where I was coming from was, uh, you know, the the volume. Uh, from a volume or a market share gain perspective, have we seen significant gains since you mentioned US has been doing decent versus Europe? Exactly speaking, Uncle, I never go bother for all such things. I look after my own business. I don't care what they are doing because their situation is different. Everybody's situation is different. Everybody has to do whatever is best for them. So I really never think also like that. I only focus on my business. Sure, sir. Uh, lastly, if I may, uh, just on Thailand, uh, you you mentioned uh, the commercialization of the first phase at least by by June end. 
uh, if you could highlight what could be the size and scale of this, and we were also thinking of expanding capacity here, any time meant for that. Earlier also, Ankur Bhai had answered this same question quite two, three times earlier to you also. I told you very clearly that this answer, this uh, small capacity we are planning is a trial production. Once we are successful with trial production, then only we will decide how much additional production we will go for that and all that. This is just the trial production, it's a new product. There are not many people, there are only two companies in the world, they are making this product and we will be the third one. So well, let us uh, first see whether this uh, product, how much up we are able to produce in the existing facility. I told you earlier exactly the same thing. So we need to wait till we, be, we come to the conclusion. After starting, it will take another three, four months for us to ascertain what is the uh, what we will need to do to get how much production. Sure, and and we already have land in place, so it's just a, a matter of time when we decide on the capacity expansion there. Uh, yeah. Sure, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rohan Gupta from Nuvama. Please go ahead. Uh, okay, my hi, good evening, sir. Hi, okay, good evening, Rohan. Bye, bye, bye. Uh, sir, uh, on this uh, new product development, so you mentioned that right now we are almost crammed with the capacity, except that uh, only on the food grade in Patal Ganga we may have some scope for further uh, production. Uh, sir, on the new product development, we have been working on these lines from last one and a half year to two years. Sir, when do you see that uh, uh, we can start giving the sampling or because the new product, new capacity will take still time to two, two and a half years to come up. So what do you think that uh, this revenue potential from the new product which we have created, only after commissioning the capacities only we can start utilizing that or there is some scope where before that also we can utilize this uh, the new product which you have developed. Are you asking about the Thailand plant or Indian plant? Uh, sir, uh, on the both the plant I mean actually. No. So, as far as the Thailand plant is concerned, there is only one product to start with, and that we have got required approvals from our major customers earlier. So, there won't be much waiting time for the Thailand plant, except some formal approvals and all that, but it won't be a very long time because the customers are waiting for that. And uh, regarding other products, it is a common uh, situation here that uh, whatever products we have been making, we have been developing, we are giving to customers, getting their approvals, as and when we are getting the approvals, we start giving it to them. So, so what exactly you want me to do? Sir, this Thailand, well, sir, this Thailand plant is a very small to start with, right? I mean, the revenue exactly. contribution from there will be hardly anything. Exactly. Exactly. So my, question, sir, my question was that, that apart from this Thailand plant, and do we have any scope at the Indian plant on the new product which we have developed in the last one and a half year to start monetizing the revenue? Yeah, no, no, this is happening, no? it is an ongoing process, there is nothing new about it. This we have been doing for years, you know? we keep on developing the product. It is going for approval. It takes its own time for approvals, regulatory approvals, FDA approvals, FSSA, several government approvals and all that. So it's a long process for any new product for food industries or even for that matter other industries also, we are very much aware that we have to go through the approval process first. And so, so some products are in the regulatory approval stage, some products are under the customer approval stage, some products are under uh, FDA application, you know, approval. So there are different products in different, uh, uh, at different stages. No, sir, my question was different, sir. Sir, I was saying that on our Indian plant, we have almost fully utilized the capacities except Patal Ganga. However, you still will be getting the product approved by the customer in the same categories. So, whatever is there any chance? Is there any chance or scope that we can start monetizing the revenue potential no, from the new product? We can monetize only the products which we, we can make at Patalanaka, not anymore. Other products we okay. can monetize to the extent whatever spare capacity we have left. Some capacity is still left in some plants. So we need to see which products are coming and what which we can offer. And but yes, for Patal Ganga plant, whatever approvals we are getting, we are we are having sufficient capacity for some products which we can monetize. Okay. Uh, not all. On this 
got it sir got it uh, sir on this uh, uh, thailand plant uh, any uh, investment uh, you have finalized that over next 1 to 2 years how much investment we have plans to invest i i told you earlier few times run by that uh, this is a very small plant and we are first starting in the whatever the existing capacity we have we are just making small changes here and there to start the trial production and then once we do the trial production Uh, we will observe it for few months and then only we will be able to decide how much new capacity we will put up in what what will be the investment and all that for that you need to wait till uh, you know three four months after we start the plan okay sir on uh, on a domestic front you mentioned though the demand is still remains strong maybe in global front except europe all other markets have started recovering Uh, yeah, other other markets have started recovering, but not Europe as of as of now. As of now. Okay, sir. Uh, in the other markets globally, except Europe, have we come back? Have we reached back to the uh, I mean, twenty two level or uh, or still that we are below those levels in a, in a other markets except uh, Europe? Sorry, just a minute. I couldn't understand. so i was asking that in a uh, except to europe in international market have we gone back to 22 levels i mean or still we are in volume terms below those levels yeah yeah if i as i say to you europe is still not uh, back on the track other market now i don't remember the demand in 22 and all that two years we going to remember all such things so now it is getting back to normal and i don't believe in going back to the history and all that for business business you see the present and the future not the history no mukesh bhai that is absolutely fine uh piche ka jaise kya karne ka round bhai wo juna balance ke dikhte dikhte ka kya no sir i was just looking that uh, Uh, fair enough for your point is uh, at least i i never look at all those things look at the future what you can do what are the opportunities are, not at the past so <laughs> fair enough uh, sir uh, on this uh, patal ganga in a food grade all these are uh, the new products which we have developed uh, do you see that uh, we can fully utilize the patal ganga facility by end of this year or there still will be some no 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 no, no. it will take uh, it will take uh, i think we started it in march 22 so it will take another 2 3 4 years i don't know exactly but uh, not not so soon okay so another 2 years it will take to uh, minimum uh, maybe more maybe more maybe four oh okay 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 fine enough sir thank you thank you okay mm. thank you next question is from the line line of krishnan parwani from jm financial please go ahead yeah hi mukesh bhai uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, just just one question from my side uh, so uh, at the current uh, you know capacities what is the peak ebitda that we could generate that's all what is that I'm saying at the current capacity that we have. Sonali, let Sonali answer the question. Sure. Uh, the EBITDA depends on many factors, Krishan uh, ji. They are revenue, raw material, your prices. There are many external environment also which impacts the EBITDA numbers. So as we say, with the historical experience, we know that 2022 person has always been our sustainable EBITDA margin, which we have always achieved. Uh, you know, except that FY23, which we said was a abbreviation because the factors were quite out of control, whatever good or bad. So we need to observe for you know another time, another quarters, few more quarters to see what is the sustainable margins going further, and the peak has to reach yet because all other plants are running at optimal. We have some rooms in the plant. In Patal Ganga is still just started, and it will take, as sir said, Mukesh sir just said, that it will take another. Couple of years or more to get to the full capacity levels. Understood, understood. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mukesh Bhai, and thank you, Sunali, and wish you, you all the best. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the line of Varun, an individual investor. Please go ahead.
Mr. Varun, please go ahead with your question. As there is no response from this participant, the next question is from the line of Sachi Trivedi from Trident Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Hi. Hi, Sachi. It is fine. All right. Very nice to uh, and Kamali. Thank you so much for hosting an investor call. I think this is a huge step in your journey as a public company and I applaud you for, for doing this. Um, I know it can be very painful, but I hope you will you will bear the pain for you know uh, being able to reach out to a wider investor base. Um, the question that I have is um, in terms of your product, where do you see you know for five years out uh, as you are looking at you know your R and D and as you are creating and building new products, where do you see opportunities? What are what is exciting you now as you look at your product uh, uh, you know development five years out? Yeah, Steve. After, uh, I mean, uh, you are considering it, it will see, uh, I, uh, I, you will see that uh, we will remain in the oleochemical derivatives, oleochemistry line, at least. So, because we still believe that we have a lot of things to do in this chemistry, in this line of products. Of course, there are some more products which we need to produce, which we are not producing currently. I am, and I am awaiting the new land whereby we can commercialize those products. We also certainly will have the plant in uh, outside India, uh, considerable capacity. That is also you are uh, considering it. And uh, of course, the new uh, plant here uh, in India as well as outside India, these two will be definitely there. And uh, in addition to that, I am also trying to expand our uh, product range. Uh, in the same chemistry, although there are not many opportunities, but we are trying our best and we are looking at some acquisition opportunities also. So if it materializes, then we will, you will see fine organics uh, 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 further strengthening the global business because we believe that there is a great potential in this chemistry and uh, we would like to definitely cash in on our uh, technical expertise and commercial experience to, uh, to achieve our dream. So this is fine organics. I think it's able to define it in one you know sentence. It is a audio chemical, you know, expertise company which is taking this chemistry to uh, whether it is food, whether it is polymers, and um, given the ESG uh, initiatives across the world, given the awareness that people have, you know, for safe chemistry, I think this is uh, you know an exciting space to be in. So, um, I mean, you are obviously, you have great operational expertise in as it is um, reflected in your asset terms and um, CapEx. Um, and these are slow moving areas, right? So I don't expect anything to change overnight in one year or two years. I think we are always looking five years out, 10 years out. Um, so I appreciate your very candid answer to this. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Sachi. Okay. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and want to ask questions. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and want to ask questions. Next question is from the line of Sumande, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, please go Hello. ahead. Yeah, my name is Sobande. It's not Sobande. It's uh, Sobande. My apologies. Yes, uh, actually, uh, thanks, uh, Mukesh sir, for giving me the opportunity to ask. That. So, I just wanted to know that what are the current challenges companies are facing during the export, exporting uh, export markets? Just a minute. 
for for our products, uh, you are talking about the challenges in export market, right? Yes, yes, challenges in export market. There are so many challenges. You would like to meet me and listen. It will take few days of non-stop talking. <laughs> just a key, just a key challenges, sir. Oh, right, uh, right now there are challenges. Especially one is the global uh, slowdown. Now the world is coming back to normal, except Europe, everything else is getting slowly, it's getting normal. That is number one. That is the one challenge. Second is uh, uh, this Red Sea crisis and all that. That is, okay, it's a challenge, but not so big challenge like uh, 2022, 23, uh, after COVID when there was a big disruption. So although there is a disruption, but now it looks quite smaller because you've seen the much bigger one. So that's not a big issue, but this is definitely an issue. Uh, third is uh, uh, the it takes very long time for the approval of our products abroad because all these customers, what we have are the global customers, and they have very long uh, approval times. And the, uh, most of our products require a lot of regulatory approvals. So the delay in commercializing the products because of regulatory approvals is one of the biggest challenge and not only for exports this challenge is also for domestic because here uh, we are as I, I mean there are some government procedures which is also one of the biggest challenges here for our domestic market also and not because that is for export also because uh, we don't get uh, the land so easily here for chemical industry so that i would consider as the biggest challenge than any other challenges now that challenge affects uh, both domestic as well as export. Okay, sir. I have another question um, for myself. Is that uh, is there any specific reasons for like uh, the present and aggressive borrowing repayment? Like uh, the current borrowing is like totally uh, approximately zero. The short time borrowings and uh, uh, long term borrowings those are totally zero. Is there any reason behind that to repay the uh, debt? So, yeah. Uh, we took this loan, we took this external commercial borrowing when we were coming up with our third Ambanath facility for the expansion. And we phased it out for over four to five years of repayment, which got ended in December 23. So it was over a period of four to five years, we made a, you know, quarterly repayment. Okay, okay, uh, got it. And another thing is that uh, uh, that I am seeing uh, in the uh, reports, previous year reports, that uh, uh, it's uh, approximately 175 crore in the fixed deposit in uh, March 2000, uh, 31st March 2022. And currently it has been increased to multiples like 31st March of 2023 has 422 crore in fixed deposit. And uh, what is the current uh, situation of the fixed deposits like uh, as of 31st March of 2024? Uh, the surplus has increased approximately somewhere to 900 CR. Currently, there is the cash on the books in the lying in the fixed deposits. And may I know the reasons why it is aggressively uh, aggressively increasing from 422 crore in uh, 2023 to 900 crore? The cash flows are increasing. All the plants, as Mukeshwai mentioned, you know, just a couple of minutes back, all the plants are running at optimal capacity. And even the last plant, which started in 22, is on the you know on the ramp up stage so they all are running at optimal capacity and the cash flows are coming in for the company and also i just wanted to know that uh, like how did it look like like up 900 crores like uh, in uh, you know totally for 12 month long term deposit or is a short term deposits or uh, i just wanted to know the what is the like uh, interest rate yields of that uh, of, uh, interest rate yield of that uh, 900 crore fixed deposits so they are uh, equally divided amongst three months, six months, but uh, not for a long term, say one year. Uh, but uh, the average rate of return, because every deposit is being placed at different point of time, so average rate of return is around 7%. Average return is 7%. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 3, 6, 12. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you for the opportunity and thank you, Mukesh, Bhai, for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. And thank you, Mukesh. Uh, Mukesh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the new capacity, uh, you know, in Maharashtra SEZ, uh, will likely come through only towards maybe to F26 end or in F27, given the timelines you mentioned. Uh, so over the next two years, sir, uh, would there be a lot of focus on optimizing the product portfolio, going for relatively higher margin products? Uh, 
to maximize uh, the utilization of the capacity or how should we think about uh, you know the you know how will you go about optimizing your capacity utilization sir so oh, as of now we are optimum uh, we are at the optimum level there is some space in for some products but we don't like to optimize and change the product mix and all that because we have a strong commitment to our customers long term customers so we don't take this short term decisions we continue to cater uh, whatever is uh, our commitment given to the customers and we continue to meet them uh, you know their demands so even though sometimes you know it is not in our interest but uh, looking at the long term interest of the company uh, we continue to support our customers whether it is domestic market or whether it is export market we we focus more on that we never focus on changing the product mix to suit us we have to we, have, we work accordingly to suit the market suit the customers that is what has been our always our philosophy so then uh, some of the newer products such as the value added products that you are developing you will probably get them into production only when the new capacity is available uh, subsequently yeah majority some of the new products which we had developed 5 years ago for us those are the new products which were developed 5 years ago so many of them are getting commercialized and not all of them but many of them are getting commercialized many of them are getting regulatory approval customers approval and when it starts you know it starts in a small way it doesn't start in a very big way in our kind of business but slowly, slowly we do take up those products if we have the production capacity available production infrastructure available for those products we continue to cater to those type of incoming uh, demand for the new customers and the new products so that we always continue we have already planned for that and whatever is being developed today that will come uh, on commercialization only after 3 4 years after we get all the regulatory approvals regional approvals customer approvals so it's a long way to go thank you and so mukesh on the new capacity that we will put up are there any thoughts on what could be the potential size in terms of of our current capacity yeah we are we, we are very clear about it but i cannot talk to you unless i get the uh, allotment of the land once i get the allotment of the land we will announce uh, whatever we have planned how much investment we have planned all these things we will announce once we get the allotment okay thank you very much thank you thank you Next question is from the line of Devendra Chawla from Parasun Exponential. Please go ahead. Hi, Mukesh. Bye. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I just want to know about the different uses of cash in the company moving forward because now the cash position in the company has become relatively large. You had mentioned an acquisition and a couple of uh, capexes. Is, uh, is there any other uses of cash that the company will be having moving forward? See this cash we have kept because uh, we are look waiting for this plot to be allotted. So we will require a lot of investment to be done. So that's why we have kept it ready. Second, we are also considering some acquisition opportunities right now. So we need to keep some amount for that also. Third is we are also considering to put up the plant outside India. So there also we have kept some uh, reserve funds for that. So I think we have already enough plants. to uh, utilize this cash in fact we will have to borrow more money uh, once all this uh, land allotment and everything is done uh, we will need to borrow this money uh, more money uh, uh, than whatever is uh, reserved now that reserve uh, you know money we have to keep it because of the ongoing uh, uh, opportunities we have understood mukesh bhai and mukesh bhai if if you could just tell us a bit about how do you think about acquisition so what's the kind of businesses that are of interest to you and uh, what is it that you expect fine organics as a company to gain from doing acquisitions so we there are not many acquisition opportunities honestly in our field uh, but here yes, there are some and uh, we are looking at some of these where we are getting certain advantages uh, which is complementing to our product range complementing to our chemistry uh, uh, gaining the additional markets customers business in uh, kind of the products what we are regularly making we might be getting some benefits so we are definitely looking for some uh, such opportunities and fortunately there are some opportunities uh, on which we are already working but we don't know so far we have not done any acquisition so far in our history but we are open for that and we are actively uh, uh, evaluating this uh, opportunities understood and and how do you think about valuations while looking at an acquisition uh, and do you look at mainly profitable businesses or even loss making businesses 
we are not looking at all the loss making and all those companies we are looking at a good companies having good product range and good infrastructure suitable to us nothing more than we don't look from the financial point uh, understood thank you so much sir thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen due to time constraints that was the last question of the day i now hand the conference over to management for closing comments so thank you everyone i hope we have been able to answer all your questions satisfactorily however if you need any further clarifications or you want to know more about the company please contact our sga team our investor relations advisors we will continue to arrange earning call once in a year at the end of the financial year thank you so much thank you thank you thank you on behalf of fine organic industry limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may not disconnect your lines thank you okay.